Lutfi, for one, for one thing, is an extremely peaceful person. He's a good person. He brings his own care and love into the workplace. Everybody loves him. He's very fair to everyone. Real people of diverse cultures using the power of their faith to ground their lives and spur them on to amazing heights. Welcome as we appreciate one of life's great portraits. A Turkish-born American citizen utilizes his incredible artistry to enhance the beauty before his eyes, while his own inner peace brings out the magnificence in all the lives he touches. The inspiring story of Lutfi On, tonight on Portraits. My father picked me up from the um, New York airport, the Kennedy airport. Uh, it was uh, July 9, uh, July 9, 1984. So he picked me up, I never forget, it was uh, a late afternoon and uh, he took me to the uh, uh, train, uh, the bus station, the Grand bus stations and uh, uh, he said, uh, yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but he said, look son, I sp smell enough things here in New York, so it is your turn to smell it. That was his uh, version of explaining things, and I, you know, New York is a very big city, it's a very complicated and could be sometimes troubling, and the places the people stay in New York, because of being very expensive, is small and narrow, and so life uh, to some people might not be that pleasant, so I guess that it wasn't such a pleasant uh, place for my father, even though he decided to stay, live in New York, so that was the way he explained it. And uh, uh, he took me to, he didn't waste any time, he took me to the uh, Greyhound bus station. He said, son, your life, is, your life is just starting now, so you're on your own. And I said, father, I have no money. <laughs> I, I have just $40 in my pocket and I had uh, two luggage and I remember having uh, uh, probably weight about uh, uh, 50 some pounds. <laughs> so I was really skinny and he uh, put me into the uh, Greyhound, uh, Greyhound bus. But before that, when I was coming from the airport to, uh, uh, to the bus station, uh, I saw some big, huge buildings, tall buildings, and I thought that they were, they were gonna collapse over me. And uh, so he just took me, it was, the, the, the, it was getting dark, and he said, okay, get in. He got the ticket, and I jumped into the bus, and bus driver was driving the uh, bus, had no English, <laughs> no money. Oh, by the way, he gave me a ten, 10 bucks. I guess that he wasn't prepared. After an uh, hour and a half or two hours, I started seeing the Baltimore, you know, it's because it writes like Baltimore in Turkish. If it writes like Baltimore, we read it like Baltimore instead of saying it Baltimore. So I saw that and I said, okay. And uh, I asked him, I said, Baltimore, Baltimore? He said, he just looked at me, he said, sit down. <laughs> Finally, I came to uh, the Baltimore uh, Greyhound bus stations and it was, I never forget, I, it was around 11 o'clock uh, at night. And waited there for about half an hour and nobody was there except the uh, few people to me then, of course, not knowing anybody, they looked strangers, but I said, hey, it's just me alone, uh, nothing to lose. So I just walked from one wall to another. Of course, they weren't there. 
the guys that were going to pick me up, uh, Mr. Rafet and uh, Taji, Taji came to U.S. Uh, a year and a half before I did, and uh, he was a hairdresser too. So at 11.30 they came and uh, picked me up, uh, and we went uh, to Rafet's house, and I, uh, he, uh, I stayed there for uh, three days uh, while we were doing uh, uh, the paperwork. So I can have the legal documents to, uh, to work as a hairdresser. And after three days, I started working. I worked there 11 years. Uh, the time that I came to US, when I came, uh, when I started working after three days, uh, there was an elderly lady that was working, working at the desk as a receptionist, uh, Rafetz. Uh, her name was Betty, uh, nice lady, she was about 70s and uh, he, uh, Rafet put me into uh, her house as a condominium as a roommate and I stayed there for about three months and then uh, after that uh, I went into, uh, I ran somebody's basement uh, which I was going into uh, uh, from the garage door to the basement Then I stayed there uh, three weeks and three weeks is the only time that I, uh, I could stand, uh, you know, going from somebody else's garage and going into uh, uh, a basement to stay there even though I paid rent. And uh, after that, uh, uh, I went into uh, the, the, the building called Abat House, Abat House um, which uh, Section 8 housing. Uh, there are uh, several doors, several of those in uh, Howard County in actually Colombia and I stayed there for about a year and a half and, uh, and then I bought my first town house after the, after three years 1987 and I had a roommate the gentleman named uh, Frank uh, which his real name was Faik Öztürk and we, st I st uh, we stayed together like five years as a roommate but I but my first townhouse house uh, 1987. The difficulties, uh, you know, no, nothing is easy. Especially you have no English, uh, you don't know anybody. Back then there wasn't that many Turkish people that when I came to uh, US. And I remember uh, the early on, and uh, you know, I worked uh, from Monday through Saturday. Uh, but Sunday I had nothing to do. I just uh, went, went outside and stayed there and wait for somebody to come and pick me up and sometimes they did sometimes they didn't but I know you know uh, I was very young and I know there was uh, uh, you know a uh, nice preacher and uh, a friend of me and uh, two years two years was the hardest uh, two years for me but I know you know it was gonna be over one day and I've been patient and I was trying to learn and I knew that the English was gonna be the number one uh, Thing that I needed to learn and I was working on it. The, uh, the time that I didn't have uh, a client and I sit down, uh, instead of wasting a time, uh, I sit down and uh, try to study and learn English. And I, I remember, you know, some people were talking with each other with the Turkish and I knew that uh, uh, using my Turkish language uh, too much is not going to allow me to learn English quickly enough. So uh, back then I decided not to speak uh, much Turkish while well, I was working in the salon, which I still uh, continue doing that now uh, because I believe that, you know, we're living in an English-speaking country and uh, if we're with the people that uh, who do not speak uh, Turkish, uh, we definitely should speak English. And I still believe and I believe that bottom of my heart and, you know, we're all uh, unified in this country and uh, the English is a language that unifies us. And uh, those uh, hard years started kind of uh, becoming easier. I started get uh, started to get to know the uh, country and the people, and uh, uh, more I started communicating with the people, and the more comfortable that I became. With comfort came friends and relationships within the town of Columbia, just outside of Baltimore. He would strike out on his own professionally, in true pioneering fashion, determined to take his profession to new heights and soon came across this vacant cottage from which to do so. In here, Lutfi dreamed of a full-service salon that satisfied the cosmetic needs of the body 
while nourishing the being within through kindness and a healthy environment. And I bought the building and I add this unit that we see over here that was sitting and uh, run away the other parts, the older parts, so it's about close to 100 years old, and turn into this facility that uh, they do uh, all the spa services. And I'm also right now thinking about uh, uh, renovating it and adding more into it. Uh, so I can add more services into it and I believe that it's going to be another uh, 5,000 square feet uh, added into this place uh, in the next couple of years. Built in 1967 by developer James Roos, Colombia was conceived as a city that would enhance its citizens' quality of life. The city's ethics would likewise influence the basics upon which Ludvi has built his fundamental view of life. Life is, is a school. The educated the people that you're dealing with, the more educated that you're gonna get. Because in order to serve to people, you have to offer them something. So you read, you ask people questions, and you're trying to keep yourself up. So uh, it's, it's, it's, a, it's a nice area. I work uh, from Monday through uh, Saturday, six days a week, and I salon is open eight o'clock in the morning and open till uh, uh, 7 30 7 at night. Uh, and I have a lunch break, which is from 12:30 to two. Uh, that's a lunch break. At the same time, is the is a time to take care of the businesses that you know. Uh, whatever I saw that while I was working, the things that needed to be taken care of and sit down having uh, individual business meetings with the uh, co-workers or uh, trying to take care of business with the salespeople or trying to do a, any type of paperwork. You like to have, uh, you like to have uh, uh, vegetarian or you like to have the uh, cheese? Okay. Well. He's very laid back, but at the same time, he's very like, I don't know how you say, not strict, but he likes to keep everything going, but at like your pace. Like he makes, he makes sure that you're comfortable with what you're doing and he'll just, he'll make you feel like right at him. And he's fair, he's very fair to everyone. And like if something's wrong, he'll make sure that you know, that you come first. <laughs> Have both of them at the same time, see if you're going to be able to eat. No. So when he opened the salon, first we worked together in Rafat's hair master, and then he opened his salon. I started working with him. Since then, I'm working here, like eight, nine years. We meet in a mosque, so when we go there, so we together. Sometimes we invite each other's uh, house, you know, do barbecue kind of things, like that kind of activity. Is it really hot? I'm dying. That hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man, eat. Eat one. Are you really filming this? No. Yeah, he's being chicken. He's, he's trying really hard to, you know, help the community and tur uh, Turkish generations raise, uh, you know, our children and, uh, you know, have good education and also not forget uh, our, our culture. And at uh, the same time, uh, don't forget our religion, uh, you know, roots and foundation of Islam, uh, you know, uh, pretty much, uh, you know, he's, he's stick to that. Uh, he's, he's doing a lot of things about, about that. Otherwise you're going to be embarrassed. Wait, how do you say, how do you say, how are you again? <laughs> how are you? Yeah. Say good night. Good night. What's that? That's good morning. Good morning. Good say oh, merhaba. Say merhaba. Merhaba. Hi. Yeah, Merhaba. Hi. Lutfi, for one, for one thing, is an extremely peaceful person. He's, I mean, he's very religious, so I, I think a lot of it has to do with his, his background, the fact that he is, is very, you know, grounded in his religion and his beliefs. And he's always, he seems to see people um, as a whole. He doesn't, he never flies off the handle. He doesn't lose his temper. I lose mine all the time. He's the only one here who, who seems to be very um, just nice and always calm, always collected, doesn't get angry. So I think that has a lot to do with it. So everybody, 
it, everybody here goes to him for everything. So sometimes I think it's overwhelming for him because he has his own clients to see, but he always makes time for everybody. I think that's really important. Everybody feels comfortable. Longtime clients become valued employees, or even more, valuable friends. It's just Lutvi being Lutvi. Notoriously generous with his time and money, the lesson of sharing with those less fortunate hit him at a young age and painfully close to home. Uh, his mother had breast cancer. And Lutvi, of course, took care of her. Financially, everything she possibly could want to try to make her better. And succeeded in it. She's very healthy today, thank God. And um, But he's always donated his time and energy to the Foundation for Cancer, the Foundation for uh, Breast Cancer. He does hair, he does shows for him, he does uh, anything and everything he can to contribute back into the Cancer Foundation for what he feels the need to do for what was given to his mother. So he'll do anything to help anybody. Breast cancer is one of the most prevalent, life-threatening diseases affecting women in the Western world. Witnessing firsthand the resilient turnaround his mother experienced, Lutfi turned all his energies towards heightening awareness of this illness and raising funds for a cure. And as ever, where Lutfi is involved, his friends cannot be far behind. My name is Rafet Gürbüz. I am from uh, Istanbul, Turkey. And I'm, this salon is mine, called Rafet Hermeses. I am also today for because we have a cancer society called Kule de Myers, and we're going to Karatan. And today, what we're going to do, we donation to them. Last year, we raised over $22,000. The year before that, I think we hit $34,000. So depending on which salon it is, how big the salon is, and the turnout, um, but we generally always average about $20,000 a year. And where breast cancer is concerned, anything means everything. I've known Lutfi for quite a few years. He became interested in helping at the center, I think through Refet. And uh, he comes uh, on a monthly basis to help clients. He is wonderful. You know, you can see people visibly relax when they are working with him. Uh, he helps with hair care and selecting wigs and then um, working with the wigs after they're selected. It's a very difficult time for cancer patients. It's wonderful to see somebody really attend to them one-on-one -on -one to their particular needs. Uh, I'm going to cut hair. Uh, so are the uh, team members that from my salon. They're going to cut hair. Uh, there are about uh, uh, three shifts three people in the morning and three in the afternoon. We're gonna cut hair, so six of us gonna cut hair. Okay, well, start right now. He's my son, like godson, you know. And we always go to like mosque and you know like holiday time because we don't have no Turkish mosque around here. And I have a good story about talking about this. It's a little bit funny. He always ask me that when he's go to driving car, he say, "My boss, when you get to race me?" I always say, "No, no race." <laughs> you know, I always tell him the no race. And he he, he never he never uh, push me. And it's okay. That's it. The goal is to reinforce the self-esteem many cancer patients lose as the disease leaves them weak and the chemotherapy robs them of their tresses. The styling and pampering is all to make these women feel as they haven't felt for quite some time. Healthy, vibrant, and beautiful. It is the only reward these dedicated beauticians will accept from this annual event. And it is the giving of oneself to a worthy endeavor that invigorates Lutvi's spirit and brings a smile to his eyes every time. It's, it's, it's a 
very big project and I'm, I'm very, very happy uh, uh, being part of it and uh, happily being part of it the uh, last uh, nine years. I have uh, this gift certificates that I give it to the uh, uh, uh, people that who represent the different organizations and different schools. Animal saviors like the, uh, the abused woman, uh, uh, really the, the, not all of them that comes to my mind right away, but it's different organizations that who also helps back to the people and there you know different people has a different interest uh, whatever that they need that needs to be done the organization is being built and basically the is the helping back to the society so we're all being part of it nineteen ninety three I got married and I was in Turkey my wife has been introduced to me by my cousin and I saw her and I liked her. So I met her on Monday and uh, we uh, decided to get married on Wednesday and on Friday we did the, our, uh, the official uh, paperwork. So we officially we were married. And one of the signs that you look for was your heart move. Was your heart move. Because that's a very important sign. And because you're going to spend the rest of your life with someone that you're going to have kids and you're going to grow and you're going to get older together. And uh, you want to give back to the society again. And the happier you are, the, that you feel you have the similar goals, uh, you can contribute back to the society. Tamam. Hadi. Babası oğlucuğunu çok özleyecekmiş ya. Hadi. Hadi gel. Hmm. Hadi aman aman aman sucuklu yumurtalar hadi paylaşıyoruz. Yay! Yay! Their stylish home is a symbol of their success in adapting to the life in their adopted country and alive with the traditions of their Muslim faith. It fortifies the lives of Lutfi, his wife Gulsum and their three children spiritually and guides their hand in all their achievements. Here, Lutfi finds the base of all his success and that which gives his life meaning. Yeah, I'm going to get angry with you. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to do reading. I'm going to read. You're going to go to school. İnsan öğrenmek istedikten sonra her zaman öğrenir. Ama dediğim gibi şimdi orada öğretmenleriniz niye geliyor oraya? Size öğretmek için. Siz niye gidiyorsunuz oraya? Öğrenmek için. Onun için okula gidince her şeyin en güzelini öğrenmek için gayret göstereceksiniz. Çünkü öğretmenler güzel öğrenen, öğrenmek için gayret gösteren çocukları çok seviyor. Ve onlara daha çok öğretmek istiyorlar. Onun için ne yapacağız? Elimizden geldiği kadar en güzel şekilde öğrenmeye çalışacağız ki büyüyünce daha güzel insanlar olalım, daha faydalı insanlar olalım. Çünkü ne kadar çok faydalı olursak Allah bizi o kadar çok sever. Ve Allah bizi ne kadar çok severse insanlar da bizi o kadar çok sever. This ant was going from one city to another. You know how slow the ant walks. The friends asked him, where are you going? Well, he said, this city, which is far away. And he said, the ant said, the other ant, how are you going to get there with your speed? Well, he just looked at them. There was nothing surprised. He said, well, look, even if I don't reach it, I'll die on the way. I know when you tell the story like this, it might not make sense. But what the end said, even if I can't reach that point, I will try. I will try to reach that distance. That's all it takes. Try it. You might not be able to do it. You might not be able to reach something that you want, you know, the goal that you have. But at least you worked for it. That to me is an honor. And so each moment of life that I have, that I will always try to do something. 
trying to be productive to the society. An immigrant American of devout Muslim faith, Lutvi On looks forward to the day his children follow in his footsteps as productive members of society. His is a prosperous life full of humility and charity. Ordinary people making extraordinary contributions to the world, opening minds and touching hearts with their stories. Please tune in next time for another of life's great portraits. Güle güle. Thank you.